Ahoy! Captain Benzie here, coming at you from above the Zambezi River here in Zimbabwe. Now, you may not be able to tell from my accent, which is very, very British, but yes, I do actually live out here in Zimbabwe, Africa. Um, I'm away from home at the moment. I'm just visiting my stepmother's lodge out here um, with my wife, uh, but EA have dropped the patch notes for the latest Command & Conquer Rivals balance changes. As such, I thought I would just take a few moments away from this beautiful scenery um, to, to get that sorted for you guys. Now, I do apologise, obviously I'm not sitting in my usual room for recording, so you may get a little bit of wind noise coming through. I am doing the best I can, I do apologise for that, but I still hope you enjoy the video nonetheless. Um, there will be no flashy animations as is usual for the patch note videos for me, it is going to be just my thoughts, so put the kettle on, grab yourself something to eat, sit down and listen away. If you do like this format of video, hit like as it lets YouTube know that I'm nice and popular and that it should be sending more people my way. Subscribe if you want to see more Command & Conquer Rivals content. Join us on the Gaming Galley and Discord to keep that discourse up and running. We love hearing your thoughts and comments about uh, things, especially these new patches. I love to hear where you're going. And if you fancy being an absolutely epic, godlike legend, support me on Patreon. Details are on screen now. So as usual, we are going to start off the balance notes by looking at GDI. Now straight off the bat, we have Jackson, whose heroic charge ability, the reload speed bonus is reduced from 60% down to 30%. That's a 50% reduction. Um, ultimately, when it comes to the boost commanders, yes, there's been a lot of consternation. They've caused a lot of problems. Back in the pre-alpha, they went from utterly useless to utterly dominating, and they've kind of stayed on that dominating side since release. Um, the biggest problem with them is that there are certain units that they just make too good. Remember back in the MLRS meta, Jackson caused that exact problem. The increased movement speed, deployment time, firing rate and reload speed plus damage just meant that Jackson could break the MLRS over his knee and make it stupidly powerful. Buffing and nerfing the MLRS doesn't change that. It just reduces its use with other commanders. Um, I genuinely think that Lang and Strong Arm are in a good place right now as GDI commanders. Um, I think this just tones Jackson down to a similar sort of level. He's still going to be useful. He's still going to be a great option for most decks and a good all-round choice. Um, but it just tones down some of the more ridiculous interactions that that had. Grenadiers getting a buff. Now, quite frankly, I think Grenadiers are probably one of the better GDI units out there. When I did the Grenadier Intel report, I was super excited by this unit. Like, it was fantastic, and I loved them. Um, do I think they need buffs? No. No, I think they are an incredible unit, and I am utterly astonished that almost no one is running them. For me, they are better than JJTs, but there we go, that's personal opinion. The initial attack delay has reduced from 0.25 down to zero, the health's gone up by 50, and the projectile speed has increased by 10 from 20 to 30. This just means that when they lob a grenade, it is more like when they get close to like a, a vehicle, attack bike, or whatever, something fast moving, they're more likely to be able to hit it, smack it with that EMP, which slows it down enough for a few more hits. Their infantry, yes, they're fairly slow moving. I think Grenadiers got away with that, um, and I'm... I'm excited. I love Grenadiers. I don't think these buffs are going to take them like the MG and move them from good to freaking ridiculous. I think they're going to take them from very good to even more very good. Yes, I'm, that's, that's English now. Um, I love Grenadiers. I want to see more people playing them. They are a fantastic unit. This is, you should be running them and they've just gotten better. Hammerheads have a training fix. Uh, damage reduced from 595 to 585. That's another one of those shaving off the edges where 5.0 and 5.3 as training had massively different effects. Uh, the Orca Bomber, incredibly dominant in upper tiers, allow players to get in and punish it more easily while it's reloading. Health reduced from 1700 to 1950. Now, hey, did the Orca Bomber need this? Ultimately, I don't think it needed it. I think it's been perfectly counterable for a long time. I think people just kind of People like to try and counter an Orca Bomber by sending three attack bikes one after the other rather than sending two at the same time while it's reloading. Um, I think this is one of those situations where it, it's going to make it easier to counter them. I don't think that's going to take Orca Bomber out of play because it is a good unit and that health reduction is not going to not going to utterly uh, remove it from play. It's just going to die that a little bit faster to attack bikes, pit bulls, talons, banshees, that kind of thing. Um... <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a bit misleading when they say incredibly dominant at upper tiers. I think it's been incredibly dominant anywhere where someone's not quite capable of figuring out how to, how to, how to counter it. 
which isn't necessarily at upper tiers. I can't imagine that people like Suzuku and Bike Rush are having difficulty countering Borkas. I'm pretty sure they know how to deal with them. I think this is a case for people who want to be higher tier and haven't quite got that idea of how to counter them down perfectly. I know that probably sounds a little insulting. I genuinely don't mean it to. These things take time and effort to learn, and I understand that they can be punishing. An Orca Bomber on its own is easy to counter, but if you're not quick at countering it, they quickly snowball into more Orca Bombers, which then becomes impossible to deal with, especially if they shove a hammerhead or, or the like out onto the field. So uh, for me, that's a positive change. I don't think it was 100% necessary, but I think it's a positive change. Anyway, let's have a look into Nod now. So the Avatar, oh man, the poor, poor Avatar is once again getting a nerf, this time to its movement speed down from 5.5 to 4.5. That is, that's quite huge. I don't know. I, I, I keep thinking every nerf to the Avatar is going to suddenly remove it from play. I kind of get the impression that the Avatar, no matter how terrible it is, it's still going to get a play by people who love it. And it's People are still going to complain about, oh, I can't counter the Avatar. Well, no, that's, to me, that's always been the point of the Avatar and the Mammoth, that they are I win buttons. They are a unit that, if you can get it out, it, it does dominate by design. And there are plenty of ways to stop that happening. There are plenty of ways to stop uh, your opponent getting Avatars and uh, Mammoth tanks out onto the field. Yeah, once they're out, they tend to dominate. I think I've shown in my recent uh, stealth tank video where I covered the Avatar stealth tank deck. Um, but yes, it becomes very, very dangerous once you can get Avatars out onto the field. I don't think that that is the end of the game by all means if your opponent is smart and knows what they're doing. I also think that, uh, simply put, you know, th th there are just ways to counter the Avatar and we are going to reach a point where the Avatar becomes useless at this rate. And it says here, Avatar has been the king of tech for a few patches now. I'm going to go off on a brief rant here. If you want to skip ahead, please feel free to. Of course, it's been the king of Nod Tech because Nod Tech is utterly trash at the moment. Everything in the Temple of Nod has been nerfed down to below its GDI counterpart repeatedly. And then they wonder why no one's using it. Flame tanks. Flame tanks were absolutely dominant in the lower tiers and useless in upper tiers. So they nerfed them so that they were useless in the lower tier and now they just don't exist at all in the upper tiers, which is a shame. I loved that unit to pieces. Now that they've moved the, uh, the flame tank from lower tier unlock to higher tier unlock, I was hoping they'd buff it again. It hasn't been buffed. And I'm looking here at the next thing being mutant marauders. There's, that's after F, so there's no flame tank buffs this time. Confessors don't have enough infantry to buff and they, yeah, they're just still not quite where they need to be. Rockworms are utterly useless. Centurions work well in Gold League, after which, again, they're pointless, that there are just better options out there. Why would you use any Nod tech that isn't an Avatar, a Basilisk, or a Cyborg? Everything else has better units elsewhere. Nod tech is in a serious need of a redesign. And actually, hang on, I'm, I'm gonna take that briefly back and I'm gonna say the artillery can be fun to use. Yeah, I'm just gonna let that pause go there. The artillery can be fun to use, it's not necessarily good. Um, but Nod Tech, Nod Tech needs a lot of work because this is the exact situation. Nod Tech becomes good, people cry about it, it gets nerfed, it stops getting used. Um, other than sort of gold through to Platinum League and, and then it just drops right off. I don't know, I don't know. I, I, I'm salty about that. Widowmakers, I think Widowmakers just kind of sealed it for me that there was a fantastic unit that got nerfed to worse than its GDI counterpart, then made more expensive than its GDI counterpart, then nerfed again and then only recently brought back into line. So uh, I'm a little bit salty on that. Mutant Marauders moving onwards. Um, these are getting buffs. Now, first of all, uh, initial attack delay has been reduced to immediate and attack speed has gone from three to four. That means they are gonna punch a little bit harder. That's a 25% increase. If you put a predator in front of them and that predator sits still, it's gonna do 25% more damage. It's gonna kill it 25% faster. If it's a predator tank that just happens to be running past, it's going to do 25% more damage. Yeah, is this going to make mutant marauders tank hunters? No, I don't think that's the point of mutant marauders. I keep saying this, people keep sort of saying, you know, oh, mutant marauders, can't, they're useless because they can't catch things. I don't think that's the point. You're supposed to sit mutant marauders down in an area that means tanks now can't get to them. And they're going to really punish vehicles that try and get close now. Good. 
Also, that attack speed increase, I'd like to think, might help them uh, deal with cyber wheels that little bit faster. We'll see. Mutant Marauders are now immune to Tiberium field damage. Congratulations, Reddit, you can now shut up. Now, <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people have confused what I've been talking about with Mutant Marauders. Um, ultimately, I, I got a little bit annoyed at the amount of people going on that Mutant Marauders should have Tiberium field immunity. Yes, they should. They should, they're mutants. It makes logical sense for them to be immune to Tiberium field damage. However, the scale of the outcry massively outweighed the actual need for it. Like, yes, it's a nice buff. Is it suddenly gonna make mutant marauders playable? Is it gonna make them good? No, no, making them Tiberian immune isn't gonna suddenly make them good. Tiberian field damage was so low anyway that, you know, it, it, it's not a huge thing. Simply put, it's not a huge thing. But people were jumping on it and getting super upset and screaming from the rooftops that this was the worst thing that's ever happened to Command & Conquer Rivals. Um, these changes, I think, I personally believe Mutant Marauders are decent. They're not Grenadier good, but they're decent. Just, they're not hunters, they're defenders. And that's unusual for Nod, I get that, it's, it's a niche position. Um, is this going to fix mutant marauders in the eyes of the screaming masses? No, no, it's not. Um, until you give mutant marauders EMP or you up their attack speed or give them two tile range or something else equally ludicrous, it's not going to change much. I'd still like to see them drop gas, uh, Tiberium gas clouds on death just for the sheer giggles that that would, you know, ensue. Oh, you killed my mutant marauders. Well, now you still can't advance onto that uh, tile because it's gas. Oh, you want to... Uh, you know, you want to you try and kill the mutant marauders with something nice and expensive. Here's a catalyst missile. Boom. <laughs> I'd love that. Will it ever happen? I doubt it. Oxana, same issue as Jackson. Reload speed bonus reduced from 75 to 37.5. 50% reduction. Uh, see my notes on Jackson. Really, it just means that she's not going to break uh, giga cannons over her knee anymore. They're not going to be ridiculously overpowered by charging up that fa much faster. Or other reloads, things like the uh, Inferno. The Inferno is going to reload that little bit slower than it would have done under a previous Oxana boost. Is it going to take Oxana out of play? No, it just it, it shaves off her rough edges, which I like. Venom, training fix, health increased to 1210, up from 1200. Very minor, just means that they survived that little, you know, there's no difference between a 5.0 and a 5.3. And um, finally, general uh, changes to fire hexes. Duration decreased from 10 to 210 down from 15. This is like when scarabs and infernos explode. They don't last 15 seconds anymore. They only last 10. Um, minor nerf to infernos and scarabs. I, I, I don't think that's going to be huge. I don't think that's going to be huge. It's a nice little touch for those people who are struggling against infernos or scarabs and you know where those flames were just holding a pad for entirely too long. It's, yeah, I'm, I, I, I don't see either way on that. Anyway, so that actually covers it for this particular patch notes. Overall, a pretty good, uh, pretty good patch. I'm just not, not overly convinced with the avatar. Um, and the mutant marauders, I think, could have a bit more. But I'm loving the changes there to GDI. Just once again, poor Nod getting hit with the nerf bat for the most part. Um, and the mutant marauders not quite getting what they need. But hey, we'll see. We'll see. It's still a big buff. Um, let me know. If you're using any of these units and you know you're running them, let me know how this patch affects you, what the changes are, how that uh, how that makes you feel. Anyway, I'll see you in the comment section below or on the Gaming Galleon Discord. Happy sailing and see you on the battlefield.